Hello, my name is Aaron Duncan. I am the Fire Chief of the Kern County Fire Department. I'm here today at the EOC to talk to you about how the water flows through Kern County. There seems to be a lot of misinformation out there about how water flows through Kern County. We often reference storms of 1983 to the snowpack that we're seeing today, and that is accurate, but the river today does not look the same as it did in 1983. The river today doesn't look the same as it looked last year. So to clear up any misinformation, I would like to bring on my Deputy Chief of Operations, Chief Billy Steers, to explain how water th flows through Kern County. Hello everyone, Billy Steers, Deputy Chief of Operations for the Kern County Fire Department. So today I'm gonna go through the, the flow of the river, the Kern River, uh, from Lake Isabella all the way through Bakersfield, and really kind of give you a rundown of what to expect uh, over the next several months as the exceptional snowfall that we've had over this winter uh, begins to melt and comes into uh, Lake Isabella Reservoir and then down through eventually through Bakersfield. So we're going to start here at Lake Isabella Reservoir. So as we look at the reservoir, uh, as the water initially comes into the reservoir, the capacity of Lake Isabella is 570,000 acre feet is, is what it has. Once it gets to that portion, it would come over the spillway at that point. That's, and when you'll hear spillage and different terminology, that is what we're talking about when it comes to the spillway. Normally, they reduce everything through uh, the powerhouse and the gates along the reservoir. Uh, but when we get significant amount of uh, water and we come into flood control measures, that you could see both the spillway and the gates uh, monitoring the water flow that comes through Bakersfield. And so this is the first point that we look at. Uh, so when we're looking at uh, CFS, which is cubic feet per second, uh, you'll, you'll hear that a lot about the, the flows of the river. So currently we're flowing at 6,700 cubic feet per second. Uh, and that is all coming through uh, the, the gates of the main dam. No water is coming over the spillway at this time. It is expected at some point during this storm that water will come over the spillway. During that time, they'll control the water flow, just like with the gates, by how much is coming over the spillway versus how much they let out the gates to continue to control the releases from Lake Isabella Reservoir. So by doing that, uh, the water flows down through the Kern River Canyon, all the way down uh, to the mouth of the canyon. Uh, where we first start seeing a uh, majority of, of this. So as I zoom out, come down through Highway 178, uh, and the water flows that come through the normal canyon that as you've come up to the Kern River Valley, we get down to uh, the mouth of the canyon uh, where, where many of see a powerhouse that's at the beginning of the canyon there. So once we get out the main canyon here, there is a canal that picks up off the, the, just as it leaves the Kern River Canyon, there is a canal that people see it in there where it diverts water out of that area. But that water continues back to an additional powerhouse where the water goes back into the river. And so uh, the flows stay the 6,700 uh, cubic feet per second all the way through uh, the Kern, uh, Kern Canyon, down through the, the mouth of the canyon, uh, as it goes through the Rancheria area, through the river, and it continues to flow. So when we get to Lake Ming, on around to uh, Hart Park, and through this area, this is where you'll hear a lot of times called First Point. First Point is a measuring station, and it is just on the west side of Hart Park, and that measures the CFS, or cubic feet per second, that is flowing uh, from the Lake Isabella Reservoir and around and past Hart Park. So at that point, it'll still be 6,700 cubic feet per second. And so that's where we're looking at the water. So the first place is we come along the river uh, along the uplands of the Kern, Choctaw area, until we get into the Goodmanville area uh, where the, the river bends through this area. So we'll see that same flow coming through this area. And so as we continue on, one of the things that is different from 83 is the infrastructure of the water districts uh, is 
quite a bit greater than it was in 83. So the first place that we start losing that CFS or cubic feet per second is the Beardsley Canal. So the Beardsley Canal uh, just east of Gordon's Ferry, you can see right in here, it pulls off th that initial, initial area. So at that point, you pull uh, approximately 1,000 to 1,500 cubic feet a second off the river. So if you subtract that from the 6,700, uh, now you're uh, reducing that flow that continues past that location. Uh, as it goes past Gordon's Ferry, and you can see the, both of the, the canals, you come to another section. So the Kern River runs through here, but there's also another diversion. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear them by a, a weir, and that diverts water to the Carrier Canal. And at that point, we lose another 1,000 CFS that is being carried off to, uh, uh, to a storage facility, whether it's a recharge uh, to use for agriculture, uh, for water for our communities, in the cities, in, in all the greater part of Bakersfield. So that, that's where the water's being stored through that time. So they can continue, they lose another thousand there. So we're already lost 2,500 to 3,000, all depends on the amount of usage of water during those days. So if we're at 67, by the time it gets uh, to Manor uh, Street, we've already lost 3,000 approximately 3,000 CFS off the river. So now we're around 3,700 in that general area. So uh, there's a lot of maps and, uh, that show that are concerns of the water flows and different things of that nature uh, when it comes to potential flooding. And, that, and this is when you look at those, all of those maps that you see, they all uh, say that the water they're all calculating that the water is exactly the same from the mouth of the canyon all the way through Bakersfield. But that is not actually what happens on a daily uh, occurrence. Uh, the water master and the districts uh, consume a, a significant amount of that water off, off of the, the river, which it allows to reduce the pressure uh, on our levee systems uh, once we hit uh, Manor Street. So from Manor, uh, you can see on the, on the Google Maps here, it shows it dry, which we know it's not at this point. Uh, at this point, you start picking up uh, the levee systems that go through Bakersfield and help protect uh, our communities. Uh, so uh, as you go through, through Manor and then Chester, just, past, just to the west of Chester, you have another weir, and this is the Call uh, Callaway Canal. And so the Callaway Canal picks off an additional um, 500 to 1,000 CFS, somewhere in there, depending on, on the usage uh, off, of, off of the river. So once it passes there and goes to Golden State, uh, we've already reduced down to somewhere in that range of 25 to, to 3,000 CFS, depending on the day. As, As you, you get, get down, down um, further, further into, into Bakersfield, Bakersfield, closer, closer to, to coffee, coffee, there's, there's more, more infrastructure, infrastructure that, that, is, that, that starts, starts pulling, pulling off, off the, the, off the uh, Kern River. Uh, they continue to reduce that amount of water and it also continues to reduce the threats of any of the weirs. So as the summer goes, <coughs> you will, uh, as we look at the Kern, at the Kern River, uh, you know, as the flows go up and go down, realize as it comes through uh, into Bakersfield, you're reducing that flow, that cubic feet per second, by at least three to 4,000 CFS, so by the time it hits uh, and leaves Bakersfield when you're getting into that Allen Road area. So hopefully this gives you a, a pretty good basic uh, uh, rundown of what the river does through the greater Bakersfield. Uh, and just so you know, Kern County Fire Department, we're, we're here, we're monitoring this every day. Uh, this is, we're here and, and prepared to uh, respond and assist in any kind of emergency that happens throughout this event. Um, so. As we, as we take a breath and we kind of relax a little bit of realizing this is a long duration incident uh, and it's a very slow moving and uh, we'll continue to be prepared and we'll be ready to engage and assist in every way possible throughout this whole event.